Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Nehemiah, aka Neo, and today we're gonna be talking about this preseason stuff. Now, I want to give a little quick shout out to the Denver Nuggets. Also, the I think the Lakers and the Suns are playing right now. Yeah, they're in OT. I would watch that right now, but honestly, I don't care about either of those teams. Uh, but again, what we're here to do is overreact to preseason games, and I got a lot of clips pulled up. I'm probably going to cut a lot of the stuff off because I may get redundant a little bit, but I want to give a quick shout out to the Denver Nuggets once again. I think that they are on the right path to being one of the best teams in the NBA. Also, for y'all who disliked that video, I don't know why, but fuck y'all. Uh, no cap. Also, uh, shout out to God, Josh Giddy. He is looking like he may be an animal next year. And honestly, I did not expect that. I completely underrated my boy. But if Josh Giddy is giving you this every night, yo, the OKC Thunder may not be able to tank. That being said, they are they are going to go for Scoot Henderson, bro. I'm not going to lie. But also, one more thing. The 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 amount of tanking that we're going to see, the race to the bottom, as one of the GM said, is about to go crazy. But first off, let's just get into some of these clips like immediately. So uh, yeah, let's just get into it. So starting off, we have a guy like Donovan Mitchell. We have his first bucket. Oh, I don't know why I did that. We have his first bucket as a Cavalier, at least in the preseason. Let me turn that off. I'm not trying to get copyright struck. Bro, look, he's this open. Like, if it's, this, if it's like this, bro, it's up. All right, let me just cut to the next clip because I'm not trying to get striked. So this is my first time to react in some of these clips, by the way. So if I, all of these clips I didn't see before. So yeah, again, another open three, you know, you love to see it. My boy Darius Garland is really going to help out a guy like Donovan Mitchell to get his own buckets. Yeah, he, had, he played with Mike Conley before, but Mike Conley is not as, or at least the Mike Conleys that we've seen thus far are not as good, in my opinion, as the Darius Garland has been for last season. So yeah, boom, switch that motherfucker. So one thing I really want to see is a Jarrett Allen to Donovan Mitchell connection. I want to see if that's true. Also, one more uh, thing. I think Evan Mobley's out with an injury for one or two weeks. He's probably going to come back before the season starts, but let's be 100% honest. Once Mobley and Jared Allen start clicking on the offense, ooh, this team is going to be dirty. Like, this team may be a top... I, I still think they're a top three team in the East. I kind of bumped down the Boston Celtics a little bit, but honestly, I'm still not sure. These guys, the Bucks, the Philadelphia 76ers, and I think... The Boston Celtics, are these these guys are just crazy, bro. But look, very high screen. He's he's gonna get that go bear treatment. You know, he, like Donovan Mitchell knows how to play this. I don't. Know. Yeah, he goes up for the three. I don't think he makes this one though. Yeah, this is the only one he missed. So now that he's out at damn near the hash mark, he's probably gonna call an ISO. Also, one more thing: a lot of these teams are still trying to feel out some of these differences. So it's really not that indicative of what they're probably going to do in the season but again a guy like donovan mitchell still trying to feel out the offense how he's probably going to mess right well i think he's probably going to be a lot more off ball than we see thus far at least for the last couple of clips so yeah again the jared allen donovan mitchell screen is about to be nasty because right now that is an open lane all he has to do is cut right he has an open lane he could probably pass it to dean uh i think his name is dean dean wade or he could probably just go for the layup. He's probably going to go for the layup, though. Like, boom. Like, he already beat his man. Ain't nothing he can do about that. Boom. Like, you can't beat that. Actually, no, never mind. So, right now, we have Donovan Mitchell at the... Around the hash mark a little bit on the wing. Right now, he's going to get the pick for the Lopez. He's probably going to be able to blow by P.J. Tucker. And he's probably going to go towards the rim... And probably just do one of three things. He could honestly just pass to Isaac Okoro, or he could probably just go for the layup himself. He's probably going to, or actually the mid-range, that's what I meant. And even though that wasn't the best look, I think that that's really a solid shot. That's what this offense really needs. Just someone who could like take and make that shot who's not uh, D uh, Darius Garland. So yeah. All right, so what we're going to have, again, is the high Donovan Mitchell pick and Jared Allen pick. So I know that Joel Embiid's probably not trying the best right now, but again, once we have a guy like Donovan Mitchell who's able to just take an explosive first step, is able to beat the big man off the corner with 
you know, just his speed and able to get him off off balance so he doesn't get the best block. I think that it creates a really good situation with the offense that they didn't, haven't really seen before. Even a guy like Darius Garland hasn't been able to do something like this, you know, just be very relentless with the rim pressure. And I think that this is going to really just unlock a lot of these players, you know. This could be a guy like Evan Mobley on the wing. He could maybe even get the putback if um, Maxi is not able to box him out properly. This guy could probably be Darius Garland, who's able to maybe make, make the shot afterwards. I just think that there's a lot more opportunity with this kind of setup. So, yeah, that's probably my last talking about the Cavaliers. I do have Donovan Mitchell or my boy. Oh, did I not? Did I not pull him up? Okay, well, never mind. That's my, that's going to be where I talk about a lot of these guys. So, yeah, but my boy Maxi has been going off, off, I tell you. Like, this dude is a freight train. That's one of two shots he missed this whole game. I kid you not. Boom, he makes this. Like, what are you supposed to do with this? Like, James Harden just passed that ball over here. How do you guard this? Maxie's going to be an animal. Yeah. Just, just a reminder. Every shot he makes thus far, there's only going to be one more miss. There's only going to be one more miss, so you, you, I'm going to be on watch. So what we have right here is literally just James Harden just doing whatever he does, doing the little little pick and roll. That's what you really like to see from him right now. I think he's going to be a lot more of a methodical player this next coming season. But looking at how I think Karis LeVert got lost, uh, I don't know what happened here, but like Tyrese Maxey is just way too open right now. All right, we. I'm gonna skip back the miss, but literally every shot he makes after this, he it goes in. L look at this. Now I will say that this is definitely a rookie mistake by Darius Garland. He definitely does not match his hips. He's not really moving the way that you really want him to. So like once Maxi does his euro step, that dude is cooked, and it's up to Donovan Mitchell. Really, just Donovan Mitchell, actually. I think Jared Allen could get the block right here, but he would have to cover so much of ground, and I don't think he's really going to try that much in the pre, uh, yeah, in the preseason. So he's out there just jogging and shit. So yeah, I think that's where we get a guy like Max. He just to you know kind of cook right there. So where does this go? So again, a guy like Shake Millen. I think I, this is actually really impressive for him, for him to make this type of pass. And that's where you, like, if this is the type of looks that Maxi should get for a lot of these games. I think that if he's able to, you know, just be open and able to make these really tough shots, honestly. I, that wasn't the toughest because it was just a one dribble pull-up. But I think that if he's able to make the wide open looks and the kind of pull-up looks, that's what you really want to see from the Philadelphia's offense. It really just diver diversifies it a little bit more than what a Doc Rivers kind of leg team really wants it to be you know as we've seen in the Clippers series they kind of struck just by going to the mid-range and doing those difficult shots but now I think that we're going to see a lot more from James Harden and Maxi as playmakers and I just really want to see how that goes Maxi, this is his own self-created shot we have a guy I think that's Paul Reed uh screening up high and this is where we get a guy like Maxi who's able to get Garland on his back and he's able to do a lot of things right here, but I think he's probably going to go for the mid-range. Yep. And that's Butter. Again, a guy like <laughs> this dude did not miss the rest of this game. Like, every shot we see him take from now, this is going to go in. Also, that's a really tough bucket. Like, there's no really analysis there. That's just a tough bucket. Now let's talk about Malcolm Brogdon on the Celtics. And it's honestly a lot bit better of an acquisition than I originally intended it to be. So, at least looking at the preseason, again... This whole video is overreacting to preseason. So let's just look at it. That, that boy is ball watching. The moment you ball watch is the moment it's over. Like the, the dude was able to make the right play and get the ball to the dude right under the rim. And that's really what you want to see from my, uh, from my boy, Malcolm. This is what they really lacked in the finals. And I think that if Malcolm Brogdon is able to, you know, just adjust a little bit. I think that this team could really just look a lot better. So he's going to probably pass it over here. Yep. Like, just look at the amount of rim pressure that he's creating. The first thing he does when he gets the ball is look for the rim. He's trying to attack the rim as much as possible to, to collapse the defense. And once that happens, 
Uh, number four, I don't know his name, but he goes under the rim to also kind of get OG out the way and a guy like Scotty Barnes. Oh, wait, no, that's not Scotty Barnes. I don't know who 21 is, but he gets 21 out the way and kind of just attracts his attention and that leaves 30 open. Again, hitting the rim pressure point, what you really want to see from a guard like this is someone who's able to go to the basket pretty much at will and possibly get the defense on their heels. A guy like OG and Anobi has to you know, come up here because a guy like Siakam got beat. And what this leads to is a Derek White three. Oh, wait, never mind. He, he fooled me. He got this dude on three. Yo, 30 went crazy this game. Hold on. I thought the read was 30, but, uh, or Derek, or yeah, Derek White, but uh, he made the right play. Malcolm Brogdon, again, a guy like Jason Tatum, and I think Draylon Brown is trailing. You go with one of them, boom. I think that this is a really fast break guard that you really want to see, especially with the new rule change with the fast break. This is definitely a really good addition for the Celtics, and I think that this is going to be great. This is probably our last pick from this. Oh, yeah. Getting the ball within the needle, even a guy like OG and Anobi can't really react to that. So, yeah, that's really great. I really like what I'm seeing from Malcolm Brogdon this far. We got my boy Jalen Brunson in the New Jersey, you know. I think this is his first game. Let me... Actually, we don't need to check. This is his first game, and if it's not... I'm saying this is his first game now. So let's just check it out. So Jalen Brunson at the top of the key, you, lo you love to see it. Again, this is what we've seen in the Utah series where he's just able to get to the rim, even despite being the smaller guard. And this is really good for the Knicks, honestly. I'm not sure if they're going to be a playing team, but this is definitely a guy that they really need. Once again, he's just not, he's relentless. He got traded to the Pistons? I didn't, remember, I didn't know that. When did Bogdan get traded to the Pistons? Hey, hold on. Yo, I'm lacking. I'm sorry. I did not realize that he got traded to the Pistons. I'll keep it down in the video. Yo, shout out to my boy. He's he's moving up in life. He got he got traded from a really, really bad team to an alright team. So we got Jalen Brunson here. Again, up at the top. Oh, he makes this? Oh my gosh. Yo, Jalen Brunson could probably average like 22 points on the system. I think that he's probably going to be one of their sole offensive creators, at least on the perimeter, and that's what you really want to see. Man, he's just taking it at the rim at all times, and he's making a lot of these shots. I think that this is a really good pickup for the Knicks, man. I think that the, the Mavs actually missed out. They should have paid him, man. I don't think he's worth $30 million a month or a year, but I think that this is really what you need from a star guard. And Jalen Brussels is not really there there yet, but again, I would say that he's... He's edging there. Oh, my gosh. He did not. All right. For sure. But a guy like Jalen Brunson, again, if he's making these type of shots that you really want to see from an offense, you just you just got to chalk it up, you know? Oh, my gosh. Every time he's just blown by these defenders. And I think that's that's really good for, for this team, man. It really just leads Julius Randle and RJ Barrett to have a lot less pressure than they really had. It gives him a little bit more of an actual shot creator. And I think that this is probably where his vocal point being in this offense has probably like a combo-ish guard, but is also able to pass the ball. I think that this is going to be a really great fit for both teams involved, a guy like Jalen Brunson and the Knicks. He's probably going to get the ball back right here from Brandle. Boom. Makes that, I'm pretty sure. Boom. Really love to see it. I think that Jalen Brunson is going to really look good on this team. So that's going to be great. I'm probably not going to pull up any clips clips from here because I I think that we need a little bit bigger of a sample size, but I think I've already talked about it on my shorts. Ben Simmons is looking like Ben Simmons, and I think that that's really good. Again, what you really want to see from Ben Simmons is this assist, this assist number, excuse me, being high, this turnover number being low, this number, uh, you really don't need it, but once you go into the playoffs, you're probably going to need him to be a better scorer, so yeah. I think that that's pretty much it for the preseason that I really want to talk about. Again, the Denver Nuggets are really solid. Uh, what's happening with this Lakers game, man? No way. But uh, anyways, this has been your boy Nehemiah, aka Noah. I hope you guys are having a great one.